I was back there just, just talking. Didn't know, hey, y'all. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to everybody this morning. Whew, I need to get myself together, I guess, before we start our service this morning. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to everybody who's watching this morning, to all you moms out there. Hope you've got all your kids, and if you don't have all your kids around, you grab whoever's there and uh, worship with us this morning. Uh, we just want to say that we're so thankful. You know, I want to know, I want to tell you that it's, all, it's a joy for me, uh, and I think for us as well, that we've been able to be up here on Sundays and be able to sing for you guys uh, and be able to bring some worship to you, maybe uh, bring some joy into your life. So again, happy Mother's Day to everybody, and we're going to start, and let's begin our worship service this morning. You stand up where you are and sing with us. Then I repented of my 
everybody hope and pray that you're doing well hey i got some things i want to share with you moms i have a word for you in just a moment but let me just share some updates with you real quick like remind all graduating seniors that if you're going to graduate we need your stuff today we need your bio we need some pictures maybe some future plans things of that nature but we need those in today so we'll have time to make sure that um, we can do the video celebration that we want to next Sunday. So please, if you're planning on that or have a student that you know of, man, we would love to honor them, but we need your help in doing that. So please get a hold of Pastor Eric or Miss Jackie in the office, and we'll be happy to do that. Hey, I hope you're following us on Facebook Live or on YouTube, Wednesday nights, when and wherever it is. I'm asking you to do something. Hey, just as a word of encouragement, put, put in the section, the comments, if you don't mind, if the Lord has spoke to you or or, or if something's happened spiritually in your life, we, we would love to give testimony of that. A lot of wonderful comments, a lot of sweet, sweet words. But we want to know if God's doing something in your life. So if he has, please let us know that. We would love to be a part of celebrating with you. And, and if we can, we'd even love to share it on the platform. Hey, our uh, deacon of the week is Drew Newell. If you need uh, anything, I certainly call the church office. But if you need help, uh, Drew is there. He and his sweet wife, Miss Heather. They'd be happy to encourage and bless you. Hey, before we pray this morning, let me share some names. And then uh, before we pray, I got a word for all our moms. Hey, there are several prayer requests. These are families who we know of have lost loved ones in the last week or two. The Holt family, the Buttram family, Brooke, uh, Buttram's mom passed away, the Gore family, and the Powell family. These are ones that we know of who have lost loved ones, especially this time of the year. There's never a good time. But around a holiday like this or a celebration like this could be very, um, this can be hard. So just know we're praying for you guys, asking the Lord to be with your family. Also, Sharon Trouser was put in the hospital on Friday. Uh, she has uh, artery problems. They're blocked. And so they're gonna, they were going to try to do surgery. They were not able to do that due to some circumstances. And so please pray for Sharon and her family and ask God to bless them. Hey, in just a moment, we're going to ask you to give. You know one of the five ways that we do that. Thank you. I've already been out to the box this morning and picked up several checks and tithes and offerings. So thank you for your faithfulness to give to the things of God. We continue to try to minister just like we would if we were going full speed. So thank you again for doing that. I know many of you have heard that uh, Governor Ivey is, re is uh, uh, kind of lifting some of the restrictions. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock we'll have a deacon's uh, conversation on phone. And we'll be talking about when we'll be opening uh, our doors when we go back to service time again we won't go back full speed we'll probably go back with multiple services only so many people in here and we'll probably wait on small group bible study so please uh, keep your ears open we'll be sending out emails and texts and i'll do, certainly be doing a phone call with you so um, j just pray for us for wisdom we sent out a survey please fill that out send that back in so we can kind of know how people feel about reopening and how to reopen and you say, well, Pastor, I didn't get one. We'll call the church office. We'll mail it to you. If you would, though, we would like to know a consensus of where everybody is and kind of how they feel about where we are and going forward, okay? So we need your help there. Hey, let me read a couple of verses to all of our moms. Hey, happy Mom's Day. Uh, I've already had a conversation with my mom. She's in heaven. And so if your mom is in heaven, it's good to know that one day, John 14, we're going to be reunited 
But listen to what Scripture says, and we've read this so many times. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of grain. Now listen to this. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of She opens the way of the household, and does not eat the bread of idols. And here's the verse that always jumped out of her children. Rise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. To all of our moms, we're going to take just a moment and thank God for you. So even at home, if you want to, mom, stand up. We, we just want to honor you and say thank you. God bless you. And today we're going to talk about a heavenly mom, what it means to, to have a heavenly influence on people's lives as a mom. And so in just a little while, we'll We'll talk about that. So we want to pray, ask God to bless you moms on this day, and we celebrate who you are and what you mean to our life. Father, we love you, and we certainly want to pray for those, I think, five families that we mentioned who have lost loved ones during this time. And God, again, never a good time, but especially Mom's Day. So I pray for them that, God, if they're having to celebrate a loved one in heaven, that, Lord, you'd be with them right there in their home, that, God, you'd bless them, let them know that they're loved and cared for, God, so give them grace and mercy. And Father, today we bless all of our moms. Thank you for the sacrifices that they make so many times, many that we will never know, but Father, you do. And so, God, I thank you for these ladies who are virtuous and victorious, and they do all the things they can. They're not perfect. They'd be the first to say it, but they try to give you honor and glory. So on this day, ladies, we recognize, we honor, we bless you, and we thank God for all of our moms. Until we meet in heaven, we'll always just say thank you, thank you, thank you. For mom lord we love you we we pray now that god you'd receive our worship time as a praise of offering and then get ready wherever you want to how you give computer whatever way you do that mechanically let's worship the lord that we love you in jesus name amen pastor you come on
sing that song. That's a good one. I don't know if any of y'all at home did the woo-woos. I hope you did. Hope you did some woo-woos at home. Oh, yeah. Your spirit. 
Oh, I love that promise. That is such a great promise from God. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. So let me encourage you at home. If you feel like God has left you, uh, I want you to hear what I'm saying. God didn't leave you. You've moved away from him. If you're not feeling God in your life, you're the one that's moved. So draw closer to him. Draw closer to him. Call upon his name and tell him, tell him, hey, I've left you. I need you to come and be by my side. Because he's the only one that's going to be able to satisfy your soul. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. So let's sing this song together. Oh, I get, I get so excited when I sing this song. Oh. My heart cries out to the Lord. As we sing. Yeah. Who can satisfy my soul like you? And who on earth could comfort me and love me like
that you reign. Thank you, Lord, that you are seated on the throne. Thank you, Lord, that you're in control. Gosh, you're in control. Nothing's going on down here that you don't know about. Nothing's going on in our lives that you don't understand and care about. Lord, we lift you up. Father, we magnify your name. Father, we just ask, Lord, that you bless us this morning. Bless the words that are spoken. Bless Brother Ronnie as he brings your message. Father, may it ignite souls all across this land. Father, may we become a burning flame for you so that others can see Jesus in us. And Lord, thank you for our moms. Oh, my goodness. Father, just, just bless them, Lord. Rain down upon them, Father, and bless every household. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, amen. Thank you, Pastor Keith. Man, what some phenomenal singing. I thank God for the warrior king. Hey, if you have your Bibles, turn with me in the New Testament to the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, we're going to begin just talking this morning about a heavenly mom. And uh, let, let me just say something right here, and I want to be very careful. Maybe you didn't have a heavenly mom. Maybe uh, whatever reason she was broken and bruised and she just wasn't able to be uh, maybe that person that you felt like she should have been. Well, I want to tell you today, the Holy Spirit can make that up. He can become the comforter in your life. Matter of fact, when my mother passed away, I wrote a poem. I read this eight or nine years ago, and I found it and uh, just thought I would read it again. It's entitled, Looking Above, just in honor of all our moms. Uh, again, I wrote it on the day that I, uh, or the day before I preached my mother's funeral, and it's entitled, Look Above. Listen carefully to all the moms, from the safety of her womb to nursing at her breast, as upon our mother's shoulders we find the sweetest rest. From the knee of her knowledge to the lap of her love, she showed us how to trust God, but to always look above. She taught us how to eat and also how to have fun. She listened when we cried and applauded when we learned to run. We thought she would live forever and always be at our side. But like the rose that loses its petals, even moms have to die. But often when I miss her and I think I can't go on, I remember kind words and laughter and seeing her at home. But one glorious morning when this earth has passed away, and all the deeds of darkness have been turned into the day. I will hear the Lord Jesus whisper, come up here with me and see. You didn't have to worry. Your mom has always been right here with me. So I hope and pray that if you're missing your mom today, you'll remember there is a reunion plan. And those of us in faith will be reunited by faith to those that we love. Hey, Second Timothy, Paul was a protege of Paul. And, uh, but, but Timothy just didn't appear. I mean, he did just get saved. There were some things that happened in his life in second Timothy chapter one. And I'll read in just a moment. I want to make some statements here. The devil is afraid of a godly mother. Let me, let me say that. I think the quotes on the screen up here, the devil is afraid of a godly mother for fear of what she may spiritually produce. I'll say that again. The devil is afraid of a godly mother, a heavenly mother for fear of what she may spiritually produce. Now, her character, her commitment are great assets for God to use. But ultimately, we read Proverbs 31, this lady, this heavenly mom, this mother that we look at and we certainly want to honor and glorify today is seen in Scripture. So Paul is writing to this young preacher and reminds him kind of spiritually of where he came from, 
who started the whole thing spiritually and how he got to the place that he is today. So let's look at heavenly moms, what they can contribute into our life and how that we hopefully, not even just as a mom, as a person can help others. Listen carefully. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. We'll read verse 3 through verse 7. Now, so listen to Paul's words. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did. Now listen to this carefully. Without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day. This young man had had an influence even on the great apostle Paul, so much so that Paul said, man, you, every time I pray night and day, you come to mind. And then he said this, I greatly miss you. I want to see you, verse 4, greatly desire to see you, being mindful of your tears. So evidently, Timothy was a very emotional guy. He walked with God. He had this, this incredible walk that impressed Paul. But Paul said, every time I think about you, I remember your prayers. But also, I remember the tears, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. Now, notice what he says in verse 5. So when I call to remembrance the genuine faith, the King James says, unfeigned faith that is in you. Now, notice carefully, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it is also in you. So this faith walk didn't start with Timothy. The Bible says it started with a grandmother named Lois. How many of you have praying grandmothers, uh, honorable women who love God and who have literally impacted, influenced the generation of your family? And we'll talk about that in just a moment. And so Paul said, Timothy, you just didn't wake up one morning and decide to love God and walk in faith. I'm going to tell you, your grandmother and your mother planted those seeds in your life, that heavenly influence on you. And as a result of that today, you're influencing others. Therefore, I remind you, this is big, stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of joy and of a sound mind. The devil is afraid of a godly mother for fear of what she may produce. Hey, I want to give you four thoughts this morning to think about a heavenly mom. And by the way, you can kind of be honest, just put this in anywhere in the Christian life, things that God uses in our life on a day-to-day -day basis to help us to become the people and to impact and to influence others as I think God would have us to, okay? So let's look at number one. First of all, Paul said, when I think about you, I remember, now notice how he said it, verse five, the genuine faith genuine faith he said first of all dwelt in lois and then in eunice and now also in you so number one paul talked about a a faith that was genuine it was real when i think about a mother i think about her hands that train us again timothy was raised by his mom evidently and his grandmother was there but you know when i think about a mom i think about how she helps us get to where we are in life you know all those wonderful things potty training isn't that just a glorious thing and learning how to take that first step but those, those hands that moms use to, to kind of help us get started in life. Can you imagine where we'd be without them? I, I can't. And so Paul said, I just want you to know, Timothy, you, you didn't get here by accident or coincidence. I tell you, I remember the fact that your mother and your grandmother had a great influence on your life and how that her hands have trained you. They have, have taught you some things of God. And so when I think of moms, I think of her hands, the dental touch, the gracious, kind words my mother had a nickname for me and it's none of your business and you'll never know that till we get to heaven but every anytime i called uh, she would pick up in that sweet voice i can still hear it today Here, here's what paul's saying about these people the most dominant trait in your life the most consistent characteristic about you is your faith L listen to what he says when i called to remember the genuine faith that is in you Paul said, I, I look at you and I see a man who really loves God. But first of all, I noticed it in your grandmother. Then I noticed it in your mother. And now I notice it in you. It was a genuine. It was non-counterfeit. It was real. Hey, four or five things about a mom. You know, a mom just seems to, to hear and to know and to feel and to care and to see. Since we're just going to throw those just as you can. You know, a mama hears when you say something, but you don't say what you're saying. She hears what you're really saying. She just has that, I think God's given moms that ability just to go that. And by the way, I thank God he did give it to me. I'm glad moms, they're gifted to that. Matter of fact, if you go to chapter 5 of 1 Timothy, begin reading that about moms and older women and, and, and widows and how they're to be honored, how they're to impact their children. The most dominant characteristic in their life is their faithfulness to the things of God. 
A mom's here. A mom hears when a child is hurting and yet they're trying to smile. A mom knows when a child just isn't where they ought to be or what something's going on in their life that may be hard or painful. Mama, mom feels their pains like nobody else. And a mom cares when it seems like the world has forgotten. I, I just want to say today that your mom's hand, just think of all the times she picked you up and wiped you off. And, and yeah, sometimes she had to be stern. She had to strict with discipline. I understand that. Those sweet hands, those strong hands, those stern hands that God uses in your life. But I want you to know at the end of the day, I, my mom just had a sense when I would call her if something was wrong. I didn't have to say it. It seemed like she heard it and she knew and she felt it. And she genuinely cared. And again, you say, well, Pastor, you know, you know my mom didn't have those characteristics. Well, uh, sometimes life can be hard and people are bruised and battered and beaten. So I want to tell you today, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the comforter. And he comes and he hears and he knows and feels and cares. And he sees. So her hands, listen to this carefully, were preparing you for life. She was preparing you for that day when you would walk out of her life forever. This message was kind of birthed about three weeks ago. I was outside doing something with cars. I certainly wasn't working on them, but uh, I was outside, and I noticed next to our house is a big, in Mississippi, we call it a water oak. I don't know what you folk in Alabama call it, but we call it a water oak. That thing's huge. And as I was doing something in the car, I noticed three red birds. We have a family of red birds that live somewhere in our yard, and I noticed that two of them were on the side, and there was one in the middle. And one would dart in and then dart out in the other one. And I began to realize that it was a mom and dad teaching that little baby red bird how to fly or what, whatever they teach them to do. And the little bird would move and they would reposition themselves. And I watched this probably for 45 minutes as they continued to take care, like, like a mother's hands of guiding and guarding that little red bird so it would not make a mistake and cost his life. I tell you, I thank God for my mom's hands. My mom had a hard job, six children, and, and, and a situation with my dad. And I'll tell you, she was there. And the most dominant characteristic in this life of this woman, Proverbs 31, and in 2 Timothy chapter 1 is this, is that she, her, her faithfulness in God, because she heard and she knew and she felt and cared. And a mom sees. So I want to say today, as we think about a mom, I think about people who are of a genuine faith. They're just real. Uh, they don't put on. They don't have to. They're just real. So whoever your mom is, wherever she is here or there, I just want you to know I thank God for women who love God, ladies who walk in faith, and as a result of that, their hands train us. Number two, Paul said not only was it a genuine faith, but I want you to see this carefully. Now it's here. Watch this. So when I call to remember the genuine faith, we see that, that first of all was in grandmother and then mother and now in you. Notice with me how it's a generational faith. Not only was it genuine, it impacted Timothy's life and to the point that even Paul was impressed with his walk with God. And by the way, Paul used Timothy a lot to help start churches and pastor. So this not only genuine faith, now it's become a generational faith. Not only her hand that taught us, but her heart that teaches us. Go back to Proverbs 31. Read those verses that I read. Her children were called her blessed. Her life was filled with those things that Timothy said, when I think back on my life, where did I pick that up? Where did that come from? Evidently, it come from a mother's hands that trained him, a mother, mother's heart that taught him. And so Paul saw generational faith. We might call it pass it on or pass it down. Have you ever seen anybody that just looked like family members? Man, you look like your wife or you look like, I hope Judy doesn't look like me. Thank God she doesn't. I know she doesn't. But I've seen people and you say, man, I, I can see your dad in you. I can see your mom in you. And something spiritually also can be passed down, not just physically, but spiritually. And Paul's literally saying not only was the faith in your grandmother and mother genuine, Timothy, I'm going to tell you, it was generational. She touched the next generation. Timothy's faith could be traced back to his grandmother, Lois. And so I want to ask today, are, are we generational people? Do we pass it on? Do we pass it down? As a matter of fact, let me read a verse for you in Psalms. As a matter of fact, I love Psalms number one. Psalms one to me is a very impactful psalm. It, it really is very practical. So I want, I want to read some verses for you here. Don't you listen very case about, case about this thing of generational faith, how that it, it, it influences not only us, but the next generation and even the next. Listen to this. 
Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. And I love this verse. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that they meditate day and night. Then verse 3. Verse 3 is using a tree as an analogy of a life of somebody who has been doing verse 1 and 2. And as a result of that, something happens in their life. So we're talking about this generational. Pass it on. Pass it down. Listen to this. He shall, be, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Their faith is genuine because it is planted on the right thing, the truth of the living God. I think about a mom as a, a person who not only trains but teaches us. How does she do that? Because she's planted. Man, her life is real. It's solid. Certainly she's sweet and, and serious and all those things. But at the time, I want to say today, this generational faith is something that is planted deep in the things of God. And Timothy said, or excuse me, Paul said about Timothy, the reason that you are where you are is because of the faith of your grandmother. Like a tree that's been planted. But notice this. Not only is a tree planted, but a tree produces. Now, now look at this. He should make, be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. So this tree is not only planted on the truth, the rock, Matthew chapter 7, but it begins to produce. I think about a mother as she physically gives birth. She produces life by the grace of God. But Paul took that another step and he said, you have become generational in producing spiritual life. And, and David is using a tree, uh, analogy of a tree that grows strong and its roots are deep, but that tree begins to produce. It's useful. It's a blessing. And so I want to say today that as God's people, as Christians, we ought to be helpful and Fruitful in the things that we do for the glory and the honor of God. So a tree is planted, a tree produces. Now listen carefully. He said a tree also prospers. What do you mean by that? Well, look what he says. Whose leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. So he's not talking about a tree, he's talking about a person. Now here's what I think is the deal here. I use this in Miss Lola Derricott's funeral. Here's a tree that's planted. It's grown up, it's producing, but now the shoots of that tree, uh, some of the fruits fall into the ground, and guess what it's doing? It's producing new fruit or new trees. So we see a life here that is in, it, it basically creating new life because of their stand for God. So a genuine faith trains us, but a generational faith teaches us that we can trust God. We can stand, we can live for the honor and for the glory of God. So we see a tree that has grown strong strong and and tall but the leaves and the fruit and the shoots drop below and all of a sudden you see new life so here's a grandmother and a mother who not only trained timothy but they taught him the things of god like a tree planted that produces and prepares us for the future so i, I want to ask you today is there anybody in your life that you could think about that man, man here's a person i know they're solid they're planted and I saw Christ in them. They produced the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But as a result of that, they influenced my life and they prepared me. Generational faith. They tell us today that in Southern Baptist life, I want you to get this, this is heartbreaking. Dr. Johnny Hunt with the Home Mission Board Evangelism Department shared this, that we're no longer even baptizing our own children. Wow. We're not even passing it on, not to our neighbor or to our enemy or to our workers at where we work. But he's saying that, that according to statistics today, that in church life, we're not even baptizing our children. We're not influencing them. We're not passing our faith on. Man, Paul said, Timothy, I thank God for you, but, but I'm going to tell you, son, didn't start with you. You started with a grandmother and a mother who had a heart for God who not only trained you up, but I'm going to tell you, they taught you some things that, that come from God. And the only way you're here today is because of who they are. So our today could touch tomorrow. Generational. Genuine faith, absolutely. We've got to have it. But that genuine faith could become generational faith when you see it passed on to the next generation. I've had the joy of baptizing two of my four grandsons. I look forward to baptizing the other two when that time comes. Man, what a joy to baptize your children, but now to baptize the next generation. So when I leave here, I, at least I'll know that they have a walk with God. And, and again, I, I'm not preaching perfect parenthood. I'm preaching that the Holy Spirit takes our life and makes up the differences and helps not only train, but teach 
the things of God. Hey, uh, back, back in Timothy, real quick, like before our time's up. So here's a grandmother and here's a mother and they're planted and they're producing. And all of a sudden, here comes young Timothy. We see the next generation of believers and those who serve in God. And by the way, you really ought to look at Timothy's life of how God used him in that early church to influence many, many believers in their walk with God. So not only is a mom's faith genuine, a heavenly mom, is it generational, but it's also growing. Now, now you need to hear this, especially moms, if you're out there, when you train a child and you teach a child, the whole purpose is to turn them loose. So, so watch me. So you've trained them. You did all that hard stuff early. And then after the physical training, and now they're up, then you begin to teach them the things of God, planted, producing, preparing. And the whole reason is so that you might go to the point where you can say, hey, I love you. It's time to fly. Wow. So she's growing. How do you know that? Well, look back in 2 Timothy again, verse 6. So he talked about a genuine faith. He talked about a generational. Then he said, therefore, I remind you, stir up the gift of God that's in you through the laying on of my hand. So here's a mom who has trained and who has taught, but now it's time to turn them loose. Hey, can I just be personal right here? For some of us, that's hard to, to turn loose and let go, to say, hey, we trust you into God's care that can be hard those two red birds they were swarming around that little bird they kept uh, wherever he went they went they, they kept a distance but they kept their eye on him so that they quickly they could be back by his side and for some of us parents it's it's hard to let go to trust God but this is her hope that all the training and all the teaching now turns into the hope that you will make your own life Timothy stir up the gift that's in you where did it come from? Well, it came from a genuine faith, a, a generational faith, but a faith that continues to touch lives today, even with the difficulties of saying, hey, God, hey, can I, can I be honest? We live in a difficult world today. I, I remember growing up, and we have a few folks in here. Y'all remember when you could leave on Saturday morning and go outside as a kid and not come back till dark? Would you even dream of that today? Would, would you even remotely, I'm going to have a fenced-in backyard and I don't even let them stay out there long without watching and looking. And man, when I was about five, six years old, it was nothing for me to go outside to the woods and stay all day. Six kids, I don't blame my mom. I think she locked the door when we, when we went outside. Can you blame her? Wow. You know, sometimes it's hard to turn loose and to trust them into God's care. But Paul said, I I'll remind you, Timothy, all that they did in the training and the teaching, now it's your turn to step up. And to walk in the faith that they invested in your life. This is her prayer. I, I think her prayer is at least twofold. Number one, here it is, that my children will seek God. My children will seek God. So, so as your parents, your grandparents have influenced, impacted your life, the question is today, is your faith growing? Is it genuine? Is it generational to the point that now you're beginning to seek God? And so Paul said, Timothy, your tears and your prayers Go back to a relationship with God and your grandmother Lois. But now it's turned out to the benefit of others because the gift that God put in you is now becoming for the honor and for the glory of God. So are we seeking God? Are we uh, turning our lives over to him and saying, you're Lord and I want to be genuine and I want to be generational, but I want to touch and impact lives for the glory and for the honor of God. N number two, here's a good one. Not only are we seeking God, but will we serve God her prayer what is her prayer that you will seek and that you will ultimately serve God first Peter I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth wow heavenly mom a lady who has her head and her heart in the right place so this person's growing as her role begins to change she's now pushing that little bird out of the nest and praying that he will fly and he will find his life and he will do the thing that God has called him to, that her prayer might be answered, that they would be used for the honor and for the glory of God. And this is really important. I want to go back to the statement that I made at the beginning, that the devil's afraid of a godly mother for fear of what she may spiritually produce. Um, who, who knows where the next Billy Graham's coming from? 
or the next Adrian Rogers or the next Johnny Hunt. And I could, I could throw in a lot, a lot of names there. Who, who knows who their moms are? I think my mom was the most surprised woman in the world when she heard I was going to preach. <laughs> uh, you? I just want to say something today. Mom, you listen to me very carefully. Sometimes it's the child that you think that has the least opportunity or the most unlikely one. But you never know what person God's going to use to turn somebody loose on the world. Would you agree with me today? We need a heavenly visitation. We need somebody to raise up to touch the next generation because their faith is growing. So, Mom, you hang in there. Your prayers are heard. Your tears are seen. If you don't believe that, read Psalms 86. It keeps your tears in a bottle. So I see a lady who learns to turn them loose and, and say, I trust you into the good keeping and the safe grace of God. Boy, that's hard. Those little red birds chirping and moving all around in my yard. But, but that, that brings me to this one, and I want you to see this. So here's these people who, are, who have a faith that was very genuine. It was real. Paul said, man, I could look at them and see the goodness and grace of God as it passed down generationally. And then Paul said, I could see as it's growing that God put this gift in you because of the faith of Lois and because of Eunice that now God's using you. But, but I want to talk about a mother's help. We see a mother's hands that train us. We see a mother's heart that teaches us. We see a mother's hope turn us loose. But a mother's help. I want to turn to the book of Proverbs for this one, if we could, for just a moment. A mother's help. Well, well, how do you do all this? Pastor, we live in a very wicked world. Man, every device has evil on it. Yes. Everywhere we go, there's sin. Yes. Man, man, how do you guide and guard children in the world today? Prayerfully and carefully, I would agree. But a mother's help is the truth of God. We all know the scripture. Train up a child in the way that they should go. When they're old, they what? They won't depart. But, but there's another scripture that I want to show you this. L listen carefully to the wisest man in the world talking about how to help touch a future, somebody's life. Listen carefully. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and verse 6. Trust in the Lord with all your, here it is, heart. Remember that heart, that generation? Then he says this, and lean not to your own understanding. Listen. Uh, my wife has a famous saying, or famous, in our house is famous. My, Josh used to come home and say, everybody else is doing it. And she'd say, well, if everybody jumps off the mountain, you're going to jump off the mountain? <laughs> Pretty good psychology, isn't it? Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean you ought to be doing it. And that, that's hard for parents today. Listen to this verse again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. It's so easy to pick up secular books and, and see things that sound good and sound right. But I'm going to tell you, at the end of the day, Mom... Your greatest help is the Word of God, the truth. Why? Because it produces faith. Verse 6, in all your ways acknowledge Him. Now watch carefully. And He shall direct your paths. I, I, I'm going to tell you uh, now, having to help raise the next generation in my family, it's tough sometimes to know what to do. What decisions to make. Where to go, where not to go. What to do, what not to do. I, I'm going to tell you, it can be tough. I love this verse, thy word have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against God. So we see a mama's faith that is genuine, her heart that is generational, her, her hope that is growing, but her help guides, leads to the things of God, the promise of Scripture, her prayer, but the promise that we have, thy word have I hid in my heart. So, so here's somebody who's saying, matter of fact, if you go back and read Proverbs 3 verse 1, my son, do not forget my law. He's talking to a young man. So as we think about parenthood today, how, how, Brother Ronnie, do we direct them in this world? Um, walked in the house the other day, and my daughter was there, my son was there, my 14-year-old, 11-year-old, and my 5-year-old were there, and every one of them were on the phone. I walked in the door, they never even noticed. Went to the refrigerator. And it, it was just amazing. Watch, I mean, the little 5-year-old, he's more intense than any of them. I heard him playing one of those games that they play, and he was hollering at the game. Stop! <laughs> Don't! And yet here I am. I walked in the house and said, hey, I'm home. <laughs> I, did, I mean, it didn't, didn't even register. Started to say, I got $1,000 I give to anybody. Come, I, you know, but anyhow. Hey, Mom, the greatest help you have, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will what? Direct your how do we navigate in this world the word of god 
Thy word have I hid in my heart. Man, there's so many verses there, but here's a mom's help. You say, Pastor, how, how in the world do you warn them? The word of God, truth of God, the promise that comes from Scripture, the prayer that we're praying that they will follow in your spiritual footsteps. So we see a mom who needs help. How is she guided? By the word of the living God. So on this mom's day, on this mother's day, remember this, you do have help and you do have hope. And it seems like maybe they're lost to the culture and to the critics and to the criticism of the day. But you never know when the Holy Spirit is speaking louder than you are. By the way, I would rather them hear the Holy Spirit than me. I would rather my children get you to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit than me. May God use my voice, but ultimately, I want them to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. So, Timothy, man, I'm praying for you. Every day I think about you, Timothy. The tears and the prayers, but, but when you come to mind, there's a grandmother and there's a mom in the background. And I'm telling you, you wouldn't be where you are today if it wasn't for a heavenly mom. So moms, I'm going to tell you, don't you quit. Don't you give up. Don't you stop. Discouraged? Absolutely. Depressed? Probably. But I'm going to say today, you hang in there. You never know when God is going to send a miracle. There's an old song by Squire Parsons who wrote and sang, Hello Mama. Now, I'm not going to sing it. Don't, don't worry. I'm not going to try to do that. But in the song, it's about a son who got mad at his mom. And he thought she was being overbearing and overprotective. And that's pretty normal. And so he lived in the Carolinas and he got mad and he had a motorcycle. And he got on his motorcycle and he sped off into the distance. And he drove miles and miles and miles and miles. And somewhere in the middle of the night, I, I don't, Squire tells it, if you ever get a chance to hear the story, while riding that motorcycle, he came under Holy Spirit conviction. Don't you ever discount what God can do. And the story goes in the song that in the middle of some obscure place, in the, a midnight hour, dark hour, he pulled that motorcycle over on the side of the road and he got on his knees. And this is what he said, hello, mama, I just called to tell you. All those prayers you prayed for me, they were not in vain. Duh! Is that not good? Something happened to me not tonight, Mom. And I just wanted you to know I'm not the same as I used to be. A mom does have help. She does have something. The truth of God. You plant truth and you let God do the rest. There comes a point when you have to turn them loose because they're adults and say, Lord, you take care of them and you watch over them. By the way, God can do a better job than we can. <laughs> Amen. Yes, he can. So, Hello, Mama. I just called to tell you something happened tonight. So moms, dads, families out there, well, the world's against us. They're fighting to pull us apart. They're doing everything they can to diminish the truth of Scripture and the the divinity of the Lord Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. But don't you quit. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. All thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Now, as, as our time's away, as I close, I want you to listen to me. Look at me. You say, Pastor, I didn't have a mom anything like that. She was mean. She was cruel. She was cold. That, that happens in life. Maybe something happened to your mom. Who, who knows? Maybe she was mistreated herself. I want you to listen carefully. What your mom didn't or couldn't do, the Holy Spirit can. So today, if you just bow your head and say, Lord, today uh, I forgive my mom, my dad. And God, today I want you to become my spiritual family. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, is a counselor. He is a comforter. And he will come and do what maybe your natural mom could not do. So I want to say today, with all of the world around us, with all, and again, a mom's not perfect. Remember that, please. Neither are you, neither am I. Do I have some regrets? You better believe it. But by the grace of God, I want to be planted like a tree, producing and preparing for the future. So today, mom, remember, heaven's on your side. You hang in there. Don't you give up. Hey, let's pray together today. Father, on this Mother's Day, we applaud we say thank you. We love you for all that, God, you've done through and with our moms. Oh, if I could just hear mom's voice one more time, sure would be an encouragement. But I know that one day in heaven, because our faith is in you, we'll be reunited. But, God, I want to pray for that person today who's kind of felt like maybe life has sh shorted them because 
that mom couldn't be what she needed to be or wanted to be. And so I want to pray for that person today who's struggling because of a failed relationship with a parent. God, would you give them grace? I pray for the parent and for the child. And God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would convict both. And Father, I pray that today you would be more closer than even a mom, that the Holy Spirit would allow them to give them peace. Mom, you do have help. Heaven's on your side. You keep walking. You keep loving. You keep serving. And let's let God do the rest. Father, we love you. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, before we go today, remind you that uh, Governor Ivey has released some of the restrictions. And real soon, we will uh, we'll let you know what we're going to be doing. And so please keep your eyes and ears tuned to all media resources. And uh, we're going to meet tomorrow night. We'll be discussing reopening, how to do that. If you got the survey, turn it in. Please do that. Would you do it? And uh, we, we really need to hear your voice as we do that, okay? Happy Mom's Day. Hope you have a good one. Bless you guys. Love you. In Jesus' name, amen.